Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, forging mosaic Damascus. Today, I'll be forging some mosaic Damascus. What's mosaic Damascus? Well, it's kind of an umbrella term for making knife steel by forge welding a bunch of layers together and then cutting, twisting, shaping, restacking, and just generally doing a whole bunch of different manipulation in order to produce really complicated patterns in that steel. Now there are literally an infinite number of patterns that you can make and dozens of different uh, patterns or techniques you know, that'll get you from a handful of little pieces of steel to some sort of complex and hopefully really spectacular pattern. Now, the pattern that I'm making today is about as uncomplicated as Mosaic Damascus gets, but that doesn't mean that the pattern that I'll end up with today won't be pretty cool. One of the hazards of making this stuff is that you can get so carried away with it that you kind of end up with these patterns that are so tiny and so complicated that, you know, from five feet away, you can't even see them on the knife. My point here is to show you the basic building blocks of mosaic uh, Damascus making. Once you see how it works, you can do a ton of different manipulations to increase the complexity and the sort of density of the patterns. All right, let's jump in and then I'll take a break and show you what I'm aiming to do. We'll start, as is typical for most forms of Damascus, by stacking up a bunch of steel. I'll be alternating a high carbon steel and a nickel steel, 1095 and 15N20 respectively. Normally I'd go with 1084 instead of 1095, but this will work fine. Before chopping them up, I'll clean off the mill scale on the grinder. Mill scale, an iron oxide that forms on the outside of the steel during manufacture, won't weld, so it's gotta go. Then we'll chop up the bar to equal lengths, in this case, six inches with the carbon steel being about twice as thick as the nickel steel. But there's no standard way of doing this. I'll tack weld it together. If you haven't seen this process before, the only point of these welds is to barely hold the steel together until it's forged welded. They're not intended to be pretty or anything else. They'll all end up disappearing as this process goes on. Into the forge it goes, where it'll be heated to a point that the steel is hot enough that the pieces will stick together, roughly 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. After it gets red hot, it's coated with borax flux, which keeps oxides from forming on the surface that would spoil the welds. Then, over to the hydraulic forge press, where it's squished a little, making the layers stick together. Now it's one solid bar of steel. Next, I'll flatten it out a little, lengthening it in the process. So let's take a break and talk about Mosaic Damascus. Now, there's no single way to make mosaic, but I'll be showing kind of some of the basic building blocks of doing it here today. Then you can scale them up later. So if we hack this bar in half, we'll see all these layers of steel running side to side. The next part of the process in making Mosaic Damascus is to distort that pattern. In this case, I'll do that by pinching these corners in. This will cause these straight layers to squeeze together at the edges, making a sort of pattern that will look like this. All right, let's jump back to the forge and see how that works in practice. I'll start by continuing with the flatting dies, pinching in the corners like we explained about earlier. Now it's sort of octagonal. Then I'll jump over to my squaring dies. Unfortunately, I've got two squaring dies and neither of them is 100% perfectly suited for this. First is a little too big, the second a little too small. 
and a little too worn out and crappy to be honest. Looks like somebody needs to be making a couple more squaring dies. Anyway, the basic pinching that I showed before has been accomplished, so now I can just square them up on the flatting dies. It would be better on a perfectly sized squaring die. We'll see how that works later, but hey. Hey guys, let me jump in here to mention that if you've been watching my videos for years or if you just discovered them and you want to give back to the channel, check out my page on Patreon where you can help me keep making videos for you. You'll also have access to plans for all of my builds. Now obviously this is not one, there's no real plan here, but plenty of my knives and other knife making gear are available. Alright, as always, thanks to my Patreon supporters. Let's get back to work. And that gives us a bar of steel, one inch square. Let's jump back to the whiteboard. So here's the main trick with mosaic Damascus. Once you establish a pattern, you'll draw it out, then restack and re-weld the layers. Now the pieces of the original pattern will sort of connect up with edges from the adjacent pattern and form additional larger patterns. One of the foundations of many kinds of mosaic Damascus is what's known as crushed W's because the way these little curved lines connect up, they form what look like little running sets of W's. But that's not really what we're doing here though. Before we mate these things up though, I'll use the surface grinder attachment on my Ameribraid grinder to square and clean up the edges of the bar so they mate together cleanly. Now you can do this on the face of your flat platen. It'll work fine, but a surface grinding attachment makes this work much better. Then we'll chop the one inch bar, exposing the pattern on the faces. Now stick them together, reorienting them so that those little lines converge into the center. We'll etch the ends of the bar with ferric chloride to make dead sure we've got them all lined up correctly. This is a fairly basic pattern used in mosaic Damascus. Various people call it various different things, but the point of it is that it makes this little sort of star shape of converging lines. Tack weld them again and put on a handle. Then it's back into the fire. Now this one works perfectly with my larger squaring die, so I'll square it all the way down until the jaws can't go any further. Especially these kinds of welds where you're welding squares together, it really helps to have a squaring die, which will put pressure from all four sides of the billet and really assure you of getting a good weld in the middle. So I'll square it all the way down until the jaws can't go any further. Then I'll just draw it out on my flatting die. Really complex patterns, we'd repeat the process, maybe manipulating it in some way, reorienting it, twisting it, whatever, and then chopping it up and re-welding so the pattern continues to get more detailed and smaller. In this case, however, I'm just aiming for this very simple, bold pattern. We're gonna set it up and leave it. So the next step is to get this pattern, which we see on the end of the bar, to move to the face of our eventual billet which will in turn be on the face of the blade so that it shows up as a repeating pattern running all the way down the blade. The trick here is to cut up the bar on an angle, then reorient the pieces flat and forge weld them again. The reason they're cut on an angle is so that when you forge them together, the force of the press will cause these slanted surfaces to smash together and weld. If you put them flat, much harder to make the weld take. Now the best way to cut up this bar is to use a metal cutting bandsaw. 
Now, I ran out of room in my shop for new machines years ago, so I don't have one. This means that I'm having to settle for using an abrasive chop saw. Much, much worse way of doing this. Abrasive chop saws are better than band saws for most of the work that I do, where I'm just chopping up stock real quickly. So that's what I have, but not so good for this. The thickness of the cutting disc is such that it wastes a lot of material. Also, sometimes they'll wander and cut on a slant. Finally, abrasive chop saws struggle cutting through really thick material like this, but we get there eventually. And there we go, the pieces numbered to keep them oriented in the order they were cut. Next, I'll tack weld them to some mild steel strips. Just the absolute minimum amount of weldment to hold them together. You'll see some guys weld them into cans and do zero atmosphere welds and all that. That's not my jam. So I'm putting them together so as to get as much movement of flux through the joints as possible. Then more steel on top. So the reason for the mild steel, sort of the bread and the sandwich here, other than just to keep everything solid and squared up in the forge, is that a really skinny piece of metal, which is what this would be, loses heat super fast, both to the air as you pull it out of the forge and to the press dies. It's absolutely crucial when you're forge welding that those surfaces get stuck together while they're screaming hot. These mild steel strips will give me a little layer of sort of insulation, call it a heat sink, whatever you want to call it, to assure that the meat in the sandwich, so to speak, is still at welding temp when you squash it so that those welds will take. Now I'm making this bar for a knife that's inspired by the original K-Bar knife, and those are about 0.17 inches thick. But I'll be happy anywhere between 0.15 and about 3 16 or 0.187 inches. Then I'll flatten it back out so it'll play nice with the surface grinder. I just want to make sure it's got the dimensions I need, about one and a quarter inches wide and about eight inches long, and that'll be enough for the knife that I'm aiming for. Next, I go through the tedious process of grinding off all that sacrificial mild steel. You gotta be careful when you're doing this that you don't overshoot and take off too much of your billet. And we're done. Here's a very rough etch. It's not what the final blade's gonna look like, but it gives you a flavor at least of the general pattern. And that's where we'll leave it. Next, in a couple of weeks, you'll see the K-Bar recreation that grows out of this humble bar of steel. Thanks guys, and see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com